SAG-AFTRA on YouTube. To stay informed about all of our live stream and video events, please subscribe to this channel. You can do it right now. Welcome to the President's Task Force on Education, Outreach, and Engagement, our live stream, Self-Taping Basics for Television, produced with support from the SAG-AFTRA Foundation. The presentation will begin momentarily. If you have questions that you'd like to direct to today's guests, please email pteoe at sagaftra.org. That's pteoe at sagaftra.org. As a reminder, today's program is being recorded and you can watch the replay right here on sag after YouTube after tomorrow. Now, please welcome today's host, sag after President Gabrielle Carteris. Thank you, Pam. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Well, we're back again. Before I uh, even begin, I would like to say welcome to our National Executive Vice President, Rebecca Damon. Cameron Mannheim, our Secretary Treasurer, will be joining us a little bit later. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Hey, uh, I also wanted to say thank you to Tiffany and Jackson. They are our captioners today. For those of you who need closed caption, um, they are the ones who are providing it, and thank you for doing that. This is a great presentation today. We've already brought you a webinar on how to self-tape like a pro for commercials. So we wanted to do another self-tape in the series on how to self-tape for television auditions. So we want you to walk away from today's session with some basics on how to go at your own, on your own with uh, more insight and more confidence in creating casting tapes that are gonna help you nail your next job, particularly because so many auditions are being done from home. We've seen now with the change of what's going on with the pandemic, I think that this may become more of the norm than ever before. Um, our guest can talk a little bit more about that as he presents, but as a result, we want you all to be in the best place possible to be able to do your job. So many of you've reached out to us, letting us know that you really are anxious about getting back to work. So we really hope this webinar will help you get there. So before I go any further, I just wanna remind you to continue to, uh, remind uh, you please to watch your mailbox, your email box for updated communications about safety and return to work because that is really right now what we are working on as, a, a, as an organization for our members. If you have any questions about this or other topics, remember you can, as Pam said, email us at pteoe at sagaftra.org. That is pteoe at sagaftra.org. So with that said, I want to uh, welcome uh, a dear friend to SAG-AFTRA, Jason Kennedy. You are awesome, the work that you do. You're here, he's here to provide us with some insider tips based on his years of experience reviewing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of actors' self-tapes. Jason is a television, film, and new media casting director and CSA national board member. He's currently casting the popular long-running CBS series, and you all know it, NCIS, as well as NCIS Los Angeles. Jason has worked on more than 50 different projects, including the CBS spin-off series, NCIS New Orleans, TNT's King and Maxwell, BBC and HBO's Emmy-winning House of Saddam, Sci-Fi's The Dresden Files, CW's Reba, Dawson's Creek, Living with Fran, and Run of the House, plus feature films such as Con uh, Congratulations, Cursed, PU 239, A Little Thing Called Murder, and Cameron Crowe's Elizabeth Town. Jason is a member, it's really a prolific career. I said that earlier to you, Jason, and it's true. He's a member of the Television Academy and serves on the National Board of Directors for the Casting Society of America. He has a fabulous presentation that's gonna to touch on everything from at-home staging, performance, wardrobe props, rehearsal slates, and so much more. Very excited to have you join us this week. Before we begin, I also just wanna say, uh, Pam mentioned it earlier, I know we'll say it again, we want to do a special thanks to the sag After Foundation for helping us put this event together. It is so meaningful for the members. Without further ado, I would love to welcome uh, Jason Kennedy. Thank you for being here, Jason. Thank okay. you, thank you, Gabrielle. I'm so happy to be here, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so as Gabrielle said, we're gonna talk about self-tape auditions for television. Um, and with productions getting closer to starting back up, I'm sure you know there will be a lot less in-person auditions and a lot more virtual auditions. And self-taping will likely be the default for the foreseeable future. So it's time for everybody to get comfortable with how to make a great self-tape. 
Uh, before I get started on my presentation, I should say that every office is different and many casting directors have varying preferences. So regardless of what tips you receive here, be sure to closely follow the instructions you receive every time you are requested to self tape. Uh, so we're going to go over the basics of everything, um, including uh, equipment, performance, slates, distractions, and finishing your video. Uh, and we'll go to the, uh, the first slide. There we go, equipment. Um, so keep it simple. It's really, it doesn't have to be an elaborate setup. Uh, you don't need to spend a lot of money to have a self tape. Uh, you don't have to be tech savvy. You don't have to be uh, a pro. I mean, you really, if you can record your own videos on your phone, you can create your own self tapes. Uh, it's really that easy. Um, create, uh, creating a, setup that is high quality, easy to travel with, and easy to use, uh, that is your goal. Um, you probably have everything that you need. If you have a cell phone, if you have uh, a tablet, even a computer, chances are it is, uh, it is ready to be your, your camera. So don't stress. Remember that we're not looking for perfectly produced videos. We're not looking for uh, a studio quality video. Uh, we just want uh, the best performance. We want to see you in the best light. So just do your best and try to enjoy it like any other audition. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. Um, so as far as your equipment, the camera, as I said, can be anything um, that can record. So a cell phone camera, a computer tablet, um, any of those things. Uh, Almost every device that uh, nowadays already records in high definition, you don't need to worry about 720p or 1080i or any of that stuff. Um, it's automatically going to record in high definition, um, chances are. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, so I get this question a lot. Um, videos should always be horizontally recorded, um, not vertically. Uh, just know that we're watching things on a, on a horizontal screen. Uh, the only really exception to this is, uh, is slates. I know sometimes it's difficult, especially when you're by yourself, um, to record a slate um horizontally so uh that's that's fine you can record that vertically and uh and and the rest horizontally is perfectly fine um it's best to use a tripod or something to secure your camera um if you have to get creative get creative use a bookshelf use a you know uh, lean it up against something um a lot of times we're not um we're not at home with our setup and so we might have to uh to get creative it's perfectly fine just you know make it make it work for you um, and then ideal framing is basically from the chest up. I'm a little, this is actually fine, this framing that I have on me. Um, you could be a little bit further back, but the importance is that we can clearly see your eyes. If we can see the color of your eyes, uh, that makes all the difference. Because just know we connect with your eyes. When we're uh, watching your performance, when we're um, trying to, uh, to feel what you're feeling, um, we're watching your eyes. That's where we are, are connecting. And uh, it it's, uh, makes a huge difference if we can clearly see your eyes. So make that a priority. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. All right, so backdrops and backgrounds. Um, Backdrops are fine. I, you know, I, I, I fear that a lot of actors worry too much about this. Um, I am of the mind that you don't need to spend a lot of money. You don't need to have a professional backdrop. Um, I'm perfectly fine with a wall or sparsely decorated side of the room. You know, even what I have right now, um, I mean, this is fine. So long as it's not distracting, so long as I don't have so much going on that the viewer is going to be looking behind you as opposed to at you. Um, so just be mindful of that, but don't worry too much about what is behind you, the perfect color, the, you know, whether it's wrinkled or not. Um, it's really more about what's here, what is in front of the camera, uh, not so much about what's behind you. We'll go to the next slide. All right, lighting. Um, so obviously you want to have really good light on your face. 
Um, again, you don't need to spend a lot of money. Um, I love natural indirect sunlight. Uh, right now I'm facing a window um, and I think that's perfectly fine. I've got a little glare on my glasses, so I probably, if I was auditioning, I would not have my glasses on or I'd just be mindful of where, uh, where that reflection might be. Um, but uh, I, I, some of the best self-tapes that I've seen have been um, with someone's camera uh, phone uh, in a hotel room, propped up on a desk, facing a window, um, and, uh, and it's been perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. I'm able to focus on their audition and I, I, I could care less about anything else. Um, however, sometimes we don't have the, uh, the ability to have natural indirect sunlight. So, you know, you can get a ring light, you can get some kind of um, uh, light source. Uh, you can get creative and use lamps in your own house if you have to, but um, experiment with what you have. Um, you know, there are plenty of options out there. Uh, I, again, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, I think $20, $30 on, on a ring light is, is plenty, um, but, uh, you know, just experiment and see what works best for you. Um, if you find that you have a lot of shadows um, with, uh, uh, with your, your background or something, you can always put a light, uh, a lamp or something between you and the wall. Um, and that will kind of eliminate a lot of those shadows, but um, it's, it's not always necessary. So again, you, the more you experiment, the more you'll, you'll find what works best for you. Um, also, I just want to point out um, when it comes to lighting, if you, if you let's, if I had a window behind me that was really bright, uh, some light coming in that was really bright, it can take away from the light on my face. Uh, so you want to be mindful of that. Any, any bright light behind you might make you look darker. Um, so uh, you want to try to avoid that as well. Um, all right, can we go to the next slide? Sound. So most devices, I feel like, can um, record audio pretty clearly without any problems. Um, it's best to ha have a, a small room, a quiet room that is going to uh, give you the best sound. Uh, if it's a larger room, you might have some echo. Um, so you want to try to find a smaller room as possible. You know, test out the sound as much as possible. Um, you know, try different areas, different corners of a room. Um, and, you know, if you have a reader that is louder than you, obviously that's not ideal. You want to be the focus of everyone's attention. Um, so be sure that the reader is a little further away from the camera. Um, if they're in the room with you, or if you don't have them in the room with you, and we'll talk about this later, uh, there are other ways to, uh, to mitigate that. Um, consider a microphone. Um, it, you know, it's not always necessary, but uh, these are fairly inexpensive. You can get a, a directional mic that's connected to your device, uh, uh, and it's, it's directed at you, or you can get a, a wired mic um, that's, you know, clipped to your lapel. Uh, the sound quality on, on the wired mic might might be even better than um, than uh, than what's on your device, and and it could uh, really make a difference. So experiment, try what works for you. Um, again, it's not always necessary. I I I, I stress this because um, I fear that actors are worried too much about this high production um, that they need to you know keep putting out for these auditions, and it, it really we don't care about that. We really just want a really good performance. We want you to focus on your performance. So all of this technical stuff is not the priority. The priority is that we can see you, that we can hear you, and that you give us a great performance. I'm going to keep saying this over and over. All right, let's move on to the next slide, please. And now we're on to performance. So uh, preparation is half the battle. Um, and I would say this to, uh, to anyone, whether you're coming into the room or you are self-taping, um, you should prepare as you would for any audition and do your research. Definitely do your research. Go to the next uh, slide, please. So first thing is to learn everything you need to know about the project. Um, I know that actors have their own uh, way of preparing for a role. Um, there are some, some basics that I, I, I definitely want to uh, highlight here. You, you need to know everything you know, everything, you need, everything about this project. You need to know what the genre is. You need to know when does it take place, who's behind it, what, how is the tone and the pacing, and why did they pick you? Um, you know, if you're trying to figure out um, the tone and pacing of a show, especially in television, a lot of times you have at your fingertips 
the ability to watch an episode. And uh, that gives you a, a leg up, uh, it really uh, catapults you into a whole nother area. If you are familiar with the show, you know the characters, you know what kind of um, uh, tone and pacing we're expecting, then you're going to know how to uh, jump into this character. Uh, and if it's uh, a pilot or an unaired series, uh, what do you do? You can watch maybe similar shows by the same producers. Um, and if it's a film, um, you can watch movies directed by the same director. It may not give you everything, but it might give you a hint as to what this project might look a little bit like. Um, and as far as why they, why did they pick you? Why did I put this in here? Um, well, the question is, why were you chosen out of thousands of actors to audition for this role? Uh, do we know your work? Does your material indicate what expectations we might have? of you for this project. Think about these kinds of things because we might be specifically calling you in because we know that you do this kind of role really well or that you have this quirkiness that we really want to bring out of this character. Um, these are qualities that we look for when we're, when we're considering people. So uh, think about that because it might be really important to how you portray this character. Uh, let's go on to the next one, please. Be confident with your sides. So <laughs> um, learning your material is one thing. Memorizing your lines is, is obviously very important. You wanna be as off book as possible, um, but knowing what you're saying is paramount. You, you really should understand the words, the places, the events, the people. Um, so look this stuff up. If you're not sure, if you're not familiar with something, look it up have a complete understanding about it so that when you speak about it, you speak with confidence that this character would have speaking about it. Um, learn how to pronounce unfamiliar words and names, um, even character names in the show. Um, it's, it, you know, we try to give you the benefit of the doubt. We understand that actors have a lot on their plate um, and there's only so much everyone can do, um, but it does kind of take you out of a scene when someone um, horribly mispronounces something, especially a character's name, especially a series regular name on a show. Um, that is something that you would think that, that someone would be able to pick up pretty quickly. So, uh, so just be mindful of that. It, again, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt, but um, it's better not to uh, pull us out of the scene that way. Um, and then reference other character sides if available. You know, a lot of savvy actors will, uh, will go through the other sides that are posted uh, in the same episode, uh, just to kind of get some context to find out what else is going on and, and see how it might apply to, to their character and their scenes. Um, and that might help you as well. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. So be off book, but not empty handed. Um, this is my personal preference. I know a lot of casting directors feel the same way. Uh, we love when actors have sides in their hand. Um, but we want you to be completely off book. We want you to be confident in your material. We want you to know your lines so that you can focus on performing. Um, and, and, you know, we, we really would rather you glance down every now and then um, to pick up a line and keep the scene flowing than have to struggle to try to remember that next word. So it's always important to have those sides, but also holding the sides reminds us, the viewer, that this is an audition. It's not the final product. So uh, I, I think it's a, a, a really important uh, part of the process to have your sides in your hand. Let's go to the next slide. Paraphrasing and ad-libbing, it is risky. Do try to avoid. So, you know, changing lines is generally not advisable, but if you have to phrase a line slightly differently to get through it, you know, I try not to hold it against you. Um, but keep in mind, there, there are many writers and producers, especially in comedy, who may prefer that you don't change anything and you risk altering the pacing, the flow, uh, the humor. Um, you know, an exception might be the occasional minor ad-libbed button at the end of a scene, but not every office is receptive to this. So just use sparingly, be mindful of that. Um, you don't want it to hurt you. Um, I understand that you want to add your extra flair, you want to make it your own, um, but at the same time, you know, if you go too far, um, you're the actor who basically rewrote the script. So be, be careful about that. <laughs> um, let's go to the next one, please. Ask questions. Yes. Um, you know, when actors are in the room with us, the, the major benefit of having actors in the room is that we can work with each other. It's not just, 
you know, a one and done, um, actors are, are encouraged to ask questions in the room. And as we are social distancing here um, uh, and, and doing self-tapes, I want to encourage actors to continue asking questions. We want you to have everything that you need to succeed. Um, so of course, we're happy to answer your questions. So how do you do this? So you get an appointment uh, or a, a request to go on tape. Um, and if you're, if you need to know if your character's the, the killer or what happened in the scene right before this, or if we're looking for something a little lighter or whatever the question is, or you just need to understand, um, you know, what's going on, ask us, a have the agent, uh, send the agent a little question or two and have the agent send it to us. And of course we will reply and we'll let you know, uh, what we, what we think will help. Um, we want you to have everything that you, uh, that you need so that uh, you can give the best performance. So of course, ask questions, please do. Um, remember, we're not seeing everybody. We're not um, reading thousands of people for a role. Uh, we selected you and, uh, and of course we want you to, uh, to nail it. Next slide, please. Wardrobe. So as I've been saying about everything, keep it simple. Um, Appropriate everyday clothes are fine, unless otherwise requested. Uh, I always recommend in television to avoid costumes. Um, my office, we rarely ask you to come dressed a certain way, unless it's a military role. But even then, we don't ask you to wear, we, we ask you to not wear <laughs> fatigues and uniforms and things like that. I always recommend dressing towards a character and not as a character. So if you're a doctor, you can look like a professional without wearing a lab coat. If you're military, you can look like military with a button down, you know, uh, shirt and slacks without wearing, you know, a uniform. Um, that gives us a, a, an idea of the kind of character that you're playing without taking us out of the scene with this whole elaborate costume. Um, avoid wardrobe with text and uh, any clashing colors and patterns. Uh, and those kinds of things, hopefully, you'll catch when you're, when you're practicing uh, your self-tape. You'll see if it, if it, uh, if it, if it kind of looks too loud and, and too distracting. Uh, next slide, please. Props. Uh, so yeah, in general, we want to avoid props whenever possible. Um, props are known to distract actors uh, in the room and possibly when you're self-taping. Uh, it also can be distracting to us. Um, so uh, you want to avoid as many props as possible. You know, the most common ones are cell phones, or a bag or a pair of glasses, those are fine. Um, you know, just don't go overboard with it and be mindful that whatever that prop is that you're using, that the prop itself isn't going to take us out of the scene, that we're not going to be wondering, you know, where did you get that designer bag or, um, or this glittery, glittery cell phone is, uh, you know, is all shiny and, and I don't know. It, you never know what's gonna distract it. So just be mindful of that. Um, and if you use a prop, don't you make it about the scene. Um, don't, uh, you know, I've, I've seen auditions with people with wine glasses and, and the whole scene is them swirling wine and, and, and I'm trying to focus on this, this reading and all I see is a wine glass going from hand to hand. So just be careful about that stuff. Um, and with that in mind, keep, uh, keep things out of your mouth. Um, <laughs> uh, toothpicks, gum, beverages, um, even if the scene calls for it, um, uh, unless we specifically say, yes, we want you to do this, um, I would avoid having things in your mouth. Next slide, please. Use a live reader whenever possible. Um, so I know this is going to be uh, more difficult uh, going forward, but uh, if you can, if you have someone in your home uh, who can be your reader, um, then it is recommended. Uh, but if you can't, uh, then try to do it via phone or video chat. Um, I always recommend having a live reader, you know, reading with yourself, uh, you know, pre-recorded is uh, like a backup option, a worst case scenario. Um, another worst case scenario is not having a reader at all and just reading your lines and, and, and maybe, you know, having beats in between. Um, and while those are okay, if you have no other option, it's highly recommended to have a reader because you want someone to connect with, you want someone to bounce off of, and, um, and it really does bring the scene to life. Uh, so it, it is really important to, to have a live reader whenever you can. Uh, next slide, please. 
slating. So I imagine most offices will give you very specific slate instructions. Um, there are, uh, there are uh, casting directors and producers that may require certain things from a slate. Um, so be very, you know, be very careful uh, 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 with what they're asking you to do. Make sure you follow it very closely. Um, however, if you are not getting uh, instructions on a slate, um, I still recommend doing one. And we're not going to, uh, you know, if we didn't want you to do one, we're not going to count it against you for doing one anyway. Um, these are pretty generally acceptable uh, instructions. So keep your slate to a brief 10 to 15 seconds. Um, you want to provide a full body shot. We don't need to see your profiles. Um, a glimpse of your personality is nice. Um, you don't need to tell us a story, but you can even if it's a word or two or, or, you know, or, you know, a shout out or a thank you uh, for the opportunity kind of thing. That's that that will give us a glimpse. That's just what we need. And, uh, and then tell us your name, your height, what city you're based in and the role you're reading for. Those are the, uh, the major important uh, details that we need in your slate. Uh, next slide, please. Minimizing distractions. So I've spoken about this a few times already, and um, this is something I, I talk about a lot. You know, we, we want to focus on your performance and you, but, you know, we're, as human beings, we're naturally easily distracted by all kinds of things. And um, you can't control it all. I mean, I, um, I, my mind wanders all the time, even when I'm watching something that I'm really majorly focused on, um, I'm constantly thinking about other things. So what can you do to kind of minimize those distractions? Well, let's go to the next slide. Uh, so think about what might take us out of the scene. Think about unexpected sounds. Um, obviously you wanna have a quiet room, but if there's other people living in the house, uh, you need them to be quiet. If there's a, a garbage truck going by, um, just be mindful of those things because they can take us out. I've seen auditions with uh, a, a fire truck going by and and I wonder, you know, it, it's really distracting when a fire truck is going by during an audition and, and I'm wondering as I'm watching this performance, why didn't they just redo it after the fire truck went by? Um, so maybe that they didn't realize it, maybe they didn't think about it, I don't know. Um, avoid background distractions, um, people walking by, animals, um, uh, a bunch of stuff hanging on your wall that uh, will make us start uh, questioning or wondering what that is. Um, props, which I talked about a little bit. Weapons, you know, we don't need to use weapons as props, um, even fake ones. Um, it does make us start wondering and thinking about those things that are that you're using. So so avoid those. Um, and loud clothes and costumes. We talked about that. And a reader who outshines you, um, and not necessarily a good reader. It could be a really bad reader who is just giving it their all. Um, you you definitely want to um, to find a reader who who isn't uh, louder and uh, more interesting than you are. So be be careful with that. <laughs> Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so finishing and submitting your video. Um, with editing, uh, most recording devices have built-in editing software for trimming and combining videos. Um, trimming is really all that's necessary uh, most of the time. You don't want to just kind of trim off the beginning and the end. Uh, sometimes you'll need to combine your videos into one video when you're uploading. Um, but it doesn't need to be all fancy. You don't need to have transitions. You don't need to have a title. You don't need to have screen uh, text on the screen. Um, really keep it simple. Uh, don't spend a lot of time on this. The priority is having uh, your performance video, your audition. We don't care about any of that other stuff. Um, we're going to be sending it off to producers and, um, and we have a slate, we have your performance, that's all we need. Everything else we already have. We have your headshot, we have your resume, we have your name. Um, we don't need all of this other stuff. So keep it simple, keep it stress-free, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, let's go to the next one. Preparing your file. So when it comes to editing and getting your file ready, um, I know that um, not everybody is tech savvy. This is this is not an easy thing to figure out on your own. Um, but if you experiment with your devices and you kind of play around with all these these buttons and knobs, um, you can learn how to edit your video and how to uh, get it ready to upload. Um, and just you know, we've got time right now. We've got at least a month, maybe two, maybe longer uh, to experiment and, and practice this stuff. Um, 
try to make sure that your file size is not too big. Um, if, uh, if you go to upload it and it fails or it takes too long, um, it's probably big and you can reduce it. Uh, a lot of these um, uh, apps on our phones and, and computers and everything can easily reduce the file size. Uh, you'll have to experiment with that with your device. Um, when you upload directly to a casting site, uh, for example, Ecocast on breakdown services, um, uh, that's a casting site. So if you're uploading it directly there, multiple video files are fine. You don't have to combine the videos. Um, if it saves you time and energy, that's fine with us. Um, and if you are uploading to a casting site, you can also upload a demo reel. That's fine too. You know, you're already uploading some multiple video files. So that's perfectly fine. And I actually might check out that demo after I've watched your, your performance. So, uh, doesn't hurt. Um, if you're uploading to a file sharing site or a video streaming site, um, a single file is preferred. Obviously it's one, it's one link, it's, it's one video. So we do want it all in, in one nice uh, package there. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uploading. Um, so I highly recommend not emailing, attaching uh, video files to an email and emailing it to us. Um, there are so many better options out there. Please either upload it to a casting site or share a link with us or your agent um, after you've uploaded it to a video streaming site or a file sharing site. Um, you know, some popular ones uh, that are preferred are Vimeo, Dropbox, Google Drive, and there may be others. Um, it's important though, I, I prefer that not only can we watch it, that we can also download it from the site if we want to, because I might need to take that video and upload it somewhere else. So if you could please um, make it so that we can download it, um, you want to make sure that the link is private, uh, that no one can access it without that link. Um, uh, I, I prefer not having a password protected uh, link, um, but if, if that's the only option, that's fine, I'll deal with it. Uh, and of course, do not make your videos public. You don't want uh, the world seeing your audition, and I'm sure the producers don't want the world seeing um, this unreleased uh, material um, out there uh, in the public, so be, be careful with that. Uh, next slide, please. And update your agent and manager. Let them <laughs> let them know what's going on with your video. Uh, obviously, if you're sending the video to them, you've already updated them. But if you are sending it directly to the casting site um, uh, or the casting director, uh, you want to keep them in the loop um, and so that they can follow up and make sure that everything was received okay. And next slide. So as I said, do not wait to test your setup. You've got some time right now to get through all of this to figure out what works for you. Um, you know, if you need someone to come and help you, if you have a friend um, or a family member who's a little more tech savvy, you know, now would be the time to call on them, um, to get them up on Zoom, to call them, um, or if, uh, if you're able to visit with them and, and still practice uh, social distancing, um, uh, now is the time to get your setup ready. And experiment. Practice, practice, practice. Practice every day if you can. Practice with friends. I mean, get on the phone and, and read with each other and record with each other um, so that when you are done, you are secure. You're ready. And you can do this as quickly and easily as possible. And once you've got this all figured out, you're going to be able to focus on your performance and giving the best audition. Uh, next slide. Thank you, and a big special thanks to the sag After Foundation. Um, you know, the foundation offers a ton of wonderful services and educational programs for sag After members, and, uh, and I love them, so a big thank you to them, and uh, a big thank you to Gabrielle. Thank you so much for inviting me, you guys. This, is, uh, this has been great. I hope it's been helpful, um, I, I, and I'm, I'm here to answer any questions. Jason, that was great. That was, I'm telling, I'm getting nonstop notes from people. I know they're writing in and then they're writing to me personally. It's everybody appreciates this. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to say one of the things that I really noticed, and this is so great, you kept met, uh, mentioning that you want us to uh, focus on our performance because so many members are feeling this idea, the pressure of doing it so perfectly that yes. they feel like the quality of that one-on-one, -on -one, just face-to-face -face with the you know, casting person and being able just to do the work is being uh, compromised. So 
Thank you for reminding everybody that the performance is always going to be the key, uh, the eyes and just the simplicity. I really, really got that and appreciate it. Absolutely. So, uh, we have lots of questions. I'm just going to start with two right now and then I'm going to go to uh, Rebecca, uh, I think has one in Cameron. Cameron's with us now. Thank you, Cameron, for being here. Um, so what That's I have muted. here. <laughs> say again. <muted> Cameron. <laughs> say again. Uh, Cameron's muted. Oh, you're muted. Okay. <laughs> there we go. I learned so much. Thank you so much. I know, right? Oh, it's course. just, I, I have to tell you that it's kind of, it's exciting for me. I'm like, oh yes, I should be, pra I, I just, anyway, I just did an audition, uh, just doing this at home. It is getting better, but the idea of rehearsing every day, it's a great action. Everybody, you know, it gives us something to really focus on so we can be the best we can be. I wanted to ask you, uh, this, so this is starting, these uh, first of uh, two questions I wanted to ask, but Eliza Pearl asks, what were your takeaways from doing your quarantine open call that received over 60,000 submissions? Can I just, <laughs> 60,000 submissions, that's a good percent of our membership. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so what were your takeaways from that? Um, you know, we're still getting through those, uh, those submissions, to be honest with you, it's, it's a lot. Um, but uh, the takeaways, I guess, were the amount of uh, talent that's out there that's, that's not yet discovered. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's really exciting. There's a lot of unrepresented talent out there. And every now and then I'm, I'm putting out these shout outs to try and, and, and help these people that, uh, that really kind of um, have been uh, really exciting to, to see. Um, the other thing is, you know, we, we put out very specific instructions about how to do these self tapes. And I would say 99% of everybody who, uh, who submitted um, were following the instructions really closely and were, were really paying attention to the details. And that's really important because the few that did not, you know, I, you, you sit there and you watch it like, oh, did you not? get it? Do you not understand? And it really does count against you when you are not following instructions. Um, so, and, and that was kind of an exercise. Part of that was, it was pur pur purposefully done uh, to, to make sure that, that actors understand how important it is uh, to follow these instructions because we need, we, we put these out there for a particular reason. Um, uh, it, it is, it is to help you shine in the best light. Um, it's, it, it's an amazing, um, it's been an amazing open call. I did not expect it to be such a huge uh, 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 turn into this huge thing, but it has been uh, pretty incredible and, and, and just wonderful to see all of these fresh faces, but also a lot of um, uh, faces, recognizable faces, but doing very different things. So that's one of the more exciting that's great. things about it as well. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, that's really, that's very heartfelt for people also who say they just feel like they've never had the opportunity if you talk about the silver lining, maybe this moment, because of all the self tapes that people can send in, like you just did, they're being seen for the first time is meaningful. Yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, Maggie Dewan Smith asks, when submitting an audition, is it acceptable to submit two versions or interpretations? Is that confusing? I no, you know, I'm perfectly fine with it. Is uh, you know, you, you want your first take to be the one that you think is the one we want to see. Uh, I'm perfectly fine with the second take. I mean, listen, with self tapes, we don't have the the benefit of having you in the room and doing it again and redirecting you. Um, and it does. I don't think it's going to hurt you to have that second take. Um, and uh, I'm I'm perfectly fine with it. Um, yeah. I have a question about that. If you go, what if you get a tape and you're thinking that person's that's great, that's not where we were going at all. Does it ever incentivize you to say, I'm gonna call that person again and ask yes. them to redo it? Because that- Yes, yes, and I've been thinking about that a lot lately because you know we're, we're in a position now, I think, where we're gonna have a little bit more time to do that. Um, you know, we're gonna try to accelerate on our shows, we're gonna try to accelerate our casting a little bit uh, and start getting those calls out there. And if I see something that is not quite what we're looking for, we, or I wanna give them a note, I know that I can send that uh, request to them and maybe within hours I can get that re that that new tape back um, so yeah absolutely I'm I'm ready for that I'm, I'm really kind of looking forward to being able to to give notes and, and get some some adjustments back that's great thank you Rebecca I know you have some questions so please yeah uh, Sarah Ann Rogers asks us uh, would you please address lighting a little more specifically do you have 
ring lights that you recommend, other lighting size requirements, secondary sources, uh, that sort of thing? Um, I mean, great question. I, I don't. I don't have any specific lights to recommend. I, like I said, I, I really believe in keeping it very simple. Um, I, you know, if you can, if you have natural light, that is, that, that is one of my favorite things. I think people look great in natural light. Um, uh, but experiment with what you have. You don't need to spend a lot of money. Um, there you go. Open up that window. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it really doesn't need to be, um, uh, a source of any stress. Um, you know, if you go to Amazon or wherever and, and, and buy a $20 ring light and see if it works for you, um, and, and it does great. Uh, it doesn't need to be a, a fancy brand or anything that's, uh, that's going to cost a lot of money. Great. We don't just, a, just, a, I mean, I keep saying this, but we don't want you to be producers. We, I already feel bad that, that actors, you know, for the last, you know, 20 years have been responsible for, for self-taping, uh, in some capacity. And it, every year it just seems to be, you know, be more of a burden, um, you know, these expectations, but just know, we, we really don't want you to be a full fledged production studio. We just want you to be actors. That's, that's the important thing. We want to be able to see what you have to offer so that we can get you on this project. You know, I think that when you're saying that it's great because, but there's one person who wrote to me because I don't, this is what he says, and it's re directly related to that. His name is Jason uh, Muzo, and he writes- Great name. Yes, isn't it? It's just, he seems, uh, he says, Jason, you, seem relatively mellow about some of the production requirements for a self-tape. However, many other casting directors are much more specific and uptight about production requirements. How does an actor approach a self-tape without knowing the taste of the specific casting director they are auditioning for? You know, you can only do you, you can only do your best. Um, you know, you cannot please everybody, um, and I would hope that my colleagues would not count it counted against you for not, you know, living up to all of their expectations. I I can really only speak to my experience, and um, and it, it really it does not have to be an elaborate thing. Um, you know the goal for all of us as casting directors is to find the best actor for the role. Um, and if you have a crinkly backdrop or if you have, um, you know, uh, a ring light instead of natural light or whatever, you know, if you, if you're, uh, if you don't have the best reader, you know, th th these things don't matter as much. Um, and I know that if your performance outshines everyone else's, if you are the, the, uh, the best fit for this role, um, then you're going to get the job. Um, it's, it, it doesn't matter if your video is not perfect. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect. And I, 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 I hate the idea that, uh, that, that other casting directors, um, are, are putting that pressure on, on, uh, on actors. But, um, I, I just firmly believe that it's going to be all about your performance. We're only going to audition for you, Jason. Uh, <laughs> Cameron, go on. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that because, um, you know, we aren't professional uh, filmographers, so we really want to bring what we do best, which is acting. But because we do have, sometimes we have choices between um, things that we can and cannot do to make our self-tapes better. We have a couple questions from uh, our members. Stokes Michael McGivney says, are, and I'm gonna roll these two questions into one, are backdrop shadows a big deal because we all have trouble eliminating them? And then Dan Sakey states, you know, we've been told that a wrinkled sheet as a background is not good, but if we don't have an expensive backdrop, is a wrinkled sheet better than perhaps a more busy backdrop like a bookshelf? So what would be less distracting for you so you could focus on our work. First of all, they should iron the sheet. That was just me. I'm <laughs> iron it. You've said wrinkled eggs n times. Anyway, go on. You know, I, I, and, and I, I really, I feel like I could watch both of those performances with, with the bookshelf or the sheet and be able to look past it. You know, maybe for the first few moments, I might focus on that, that background, but eventually I'll, I'll focus on the performance. Um, but that being said, you know, I, I personally don't prefer a sheet. You know, um, you know, I'd rather just have your, your room, your wall. You know, we're getting so much more used to seeing people like this. 
you know, in Zoom meetings where we're seeing people in their homes. Um, and so I feel like this is going to become more of the norm. And I think self-tapes in this kind of environment is, is going to be um, perfectly acceptable. So I, I really don't think it's necessary to even have any kind of backdrop. I think a bookshelf is fine. I think some pictures on the wall is fine. Um, you know, just, uh, just you know, keep it simple. Thank you. Um, Kristen Charney asks, she says, I'd love to know if Jason has any comment or advice when an actor is asked to audition via Skype or Zoom. Is there a different variable that, because there's different variables to that regarding, uh, rather than the self-taping? Do you see a difference? And Yeah, you know, I haven't had the opportunity to do a, a live, you know, Skype or Zoom audition yet. Um, uh, and that may happen down the road. I know some offices uh, are planning and, and may have already been doing that. Um, yeah, it, it'll be a different experience. I think it's going to be a little bit more like being in the room. You'll have a little more give and take. You'll have the opportunity to ask questions. Um, and, uh, and you'll be likely, hopefully, reading with somebody um, who is, uh, you know, very familiar with the material. So there's a lot of great benefits to that. Um, and uh, it, it, it's kind of a hybrid, you know, of, 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 uh, of self-taping and, and what we used to do with having people in the room. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, see that uh, become more of a norm. And, and I, you know, as a, as a casting director, one of my favorite parts of, of this job is reading with actors. And so I'm really going to miss <laughs> uh, going forward for the next few months, uh, reading with actors. Um, uh, you know, self-tapes are probably going to be the norm for our office for a while. Um, but I do hope that, uh, that we'll be able to do some of those virtual, um, you know, Skype or Zoom sessions as well. One of the things that was asked is that with um, all the auditions that are starting to come up now, do you have any real sense? And I think I'm asking because it was written. I don't know that anybody has a real sense, but do you have a real sense of when production is really going to start versus what people are hoping? Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I, the, I know the unions are talking and I know the studios are discussing. Um, I, I know that uh, productions were hoping to start in August. Um, but I'll tell you, my concern is that, you know, with, with cases still rising and more restrictions being, you know, uh, implemented just yesterday, um, that that could be pushed. You know, if things don't get better, then, then we might not be starting that soon. I think the earliest we'll be starting is, is sometime in August, but, um, uh, you know, only time's going to tell. Uh, yeah. yeah. I agree. Um, Rebecca, did you have any? I, I, I do. I got a couple different ones. Um, and I, I really appreciated that uh, answer, Jason. I know uh, as a New Yorker, I appreciate that answer. You got to take it day by day. Um, so uh, we had a question about diversity in casting and what is your philosophy around expanding opportunities? How is it that you and your office and colleagues and how do you encourage other casting directors to uh, take on a positive approach to that? Um, well, I mean, diversity in casting is, is, has always been a priority in our office. Um, we, and, and I, I will say, you know, even, you know, I'm a member of the Casting Society of America, and we've been, there's a lot of initiatives we've been taking in, in diversity and inclusion. Um, it's, it's always important as a casting director to represent these characters as the world is represented. And, uh, and so we try to always think actively about that as we're reading a script, um, if, uh, you know, subconsciously I might read a, a, a character, um, uh, for example, a, a firefighter in his 40s, you know, and instantly I have a picture in my mind because this is how I was taught a firefighter in his 40s is a white guy. Um, but it doesn't have to be that. It's not supposed to be that. That is just what's in my mind for some reason. Um, and so I, and it might be in what the, in the writer's mind. And so it's our job as casting directors to say, okay, but who else plays, who else is this character? This could be a woman, this could be a person of color, this could be older, this could be younger. And so we're constantly, as we're uh, going through these characters, we're constantly, uh, reevaluating what these roles can be and, and coming up with ideas on how to diversify, you know, a cast. Uh, and then, of course, when we put it out to, to agents and managers, you know, we're trying to get as, as many different ideas um, and, uh, and, and keep it uh, as, as interesting and diverse as possible. Um, it's, it's a constant, um, it's a constant uh, process. Uh, and, uh, and we have a lot of work to do, uh, but it is, it is definitely uh, a priority in casting. Thank you. Go on, Cam. Uh, I just 
was happy to hear you say diversity and inclusion because a lot of time people with disabilities are left out of yeah. the diversity Absolutely. pool of people. And um, I know that <clears throat> I fight hard to include people with disabilities everywhere, not in just roles that are written for them, but in any kind of role. You know, um, yeah. I'm so lucky to work with someone who has Down syndrome, who's a delight and a wonder. Um, and I'm just glad to hear that you use that term diversity and inclusion. It's really important. And then last, I have a question about um, kind of blind submissions. Do you, would you ever, if someone sent you a tape without, you know, um, you're asking them for one, would you ever on an off day when you just got nothing to do, watch a, an unsolicited tape? You know, I will say with social media lately, I have been more engaged, especially now with, with everything being shut down and more time on my hands. I've been more engaged with being tagged in, uh, in posts and people sharing their headshots and their reels and, and a, a monologue. And, um, and, you know, and sometimes I'll watch, you know, there's a lot that comes through. Uh, but yeah, sure, why not? You know, I, I, I'm always very curious. I'm a naturally curious person. I'm always wondering who is that actor, um, you know, who, you know, I, I want to know, I want to know everybody. <laughs> so um, I, it's absolutely. <laughs> I suspect there's a fine line between someone who sends you something every day and then someone right. who sends you something once in a while that they're really proud of. Well, no Nudgy, right? We don't want Nudgy. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, someone who's, who's sending something every day who's basically spamming you, that's, that's going to be a turnoff. But I think, you know, especially right now, we're in a position where, where actors can create their own content, um, they can, uh, they can, you know, uh, they can be proud of the things that they're creating, uh, promoting uh, new work that's coming out. And I think, you know, a monthly or, or every once in a while kind of um, shout out about something that they're doing um, will get our attention. Absolutely. Um, and I think it's a great way to promote yourself and to, uh, and to kind of get yourself in front of us. You know, even if it, if, even if I glance at a headshot that I was tagged in, um, just that you know, few seconds of looking at this person's face, it's going to be in my brain somewhere. And so when I go to th through submissions months later, I'm going to have some kind of familiarity with this person. Um, so it, it, it does help. Um, it helps us uh, kind of remember people. So why not? Yeah. When you, when you talk about, thank you for that, Jason, when you talk about remembering people, a couple of people have written in, so I'll just kind of prayer, paraphrase. But they're saying what it makes the, since look at you had 60,000 submissions, you have people who are gonna now definitely be writing into you. What makes an audition or somebody stand out? Uh, they're asking what, you know, what makes you, and I would say, of course, aside from performance, but what have you noticed that these are the moments that get you? You know, pr preparation is, is huge. If you're not prepared, you really can't perform. Um, and, and a, a lot of actors, um, just are not, they're just not solid. They're not ready yet to, to kind of jump into that particular audition. Um, so that, that's huge. Um, and then just being able to engage and just really connect, dig deep, um, and just make it, you know, make it, um, a, a, um, a genuine, um, a performance. It's, it's just, it, it's a little hard to explain, but when we're when we're watching and it's real, um, it just it pops. If it's artificial, if it's fake, if I don't believe it, then then obviously it's 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 not going to work. And and you know we we notice that sometimes when we when we watch some TV shows and and movies, you know it's like that performance. I didn't believe that. That, that, does, that does not make sense. Um, so it, yeah, it, it's it's just gotta it's gotta be grounded and real. Um, and uh, and that's, that's what pops for me. That's great. Um, Jenny, uh, and now, first of all, this is a, a woman named Jenny uh, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Venna. She, do you use a thing called EcoCast? Yeah, EcoCast is a, um, a self-taping um, website that's part of Breakdown Services. So, so she wanted to know, if using EcoCast, what is the best way to label the files we are uploading? Would using our names in the files be redundant? If using EcoCast, what is good information to put in the submission note field? And also, what are your thoughts on the title cards at the front and end of a take? All right, some good questions. Um, I mean, specifically when using EcoCast, we don't necessarily need the, um, your name in the title, in, in the, um, the file name. Um, but still, I, it, it, 
why not you know name your file your name the project the role the scene number the take number uh, that's important information it might help you also when you're uploading it to keep track of what it is you're uploading and then if I end up downloading that file and putting it somewhere else then that might you know might help me keep things organized um, and I think that's important wherever you upload it um, as I mentioned earlier as far as a title uh, screen and, and text all that stuff not necessary uh, don't waste your time on that um, and what was the, the middle question and the uh... It says, um, what are your thoughts on title cards at the front and end of the take? Oh, there's something else. But, uh, uh, if okay. using EagleCast, what is good information to put in the submission note file? Oh, the submission note file. Um, I think, uh, I, you know, unless we're looking for something specific, I don't think you need to put something in the note file. Um, sometimes we'll get like a thank you or telling us that, you know, you're based in a certain city or your local hire or something like that. Uh, but that information we either already know or you may be set in your slate. So it, it may not be necessary to put anything there. Great. Thank you. Um, and Cameron, you had a question? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Uh, you may have uh, gone over this, but it's always good to repeat. Sometimes somebody does a beautiful job and they're not going to get cast for this role. How often do you go back to those tapes and use them to show another director or producer and say, this person was so wonderful for another job, but I really think you should consider them? Um, I don't know that I could say specifically how often, but I can say very, pretty often. Um, you know, we, uh, we've, we've definitely hired uh, people that have come in on, on other roles on our show uh, for, for later episodes. Um, but a lot of times, you know, we'll just, a lot of times we'll just, you know, will fall in love with an actor who was great, you know, gave a great reading for this, this role, but wasn't quite right or didn't get the role. Um, and we'll just bring them right back in for another role because we know they're, you know, our producers love them. We know it's going to be the right, right fit. Sometimes the producers and a different director um, will need to just see the performance. Uh, we'll need to see the audition, um, even if uh, they gave a great performance a few months ago uh, for a different role. So, um, but it has happened. I mean, it, it, it is something that we, we're always looking for, uh, for, for the best actors. And so, um, we fall in love with actors just like anyone else. We become fans just like anyone else. And we're, uh, we're always tr pushing and advocating for, for the people that we believe in. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Rebecca, you have a question? Yeah, uh, Omar has a question uh, about this. And uh, Omar's question has to do with uh, a little bit of a, sometimes his agent and manager have different views about, is it okay to ask for casting, having an update after an audition? Uh, so, for example, he says he submits a self-tape for a, a leading role and a week or so has passed. Is it okay for his agent or manager to ask? And so you're going to help us uh, settle their difference of opinion, uh, um, whether I, it's okay to ask for updates. I would say that it's their job <laughs> to know what's going on. So, yes, uh, they, sh they should definitely uh, check in and say, hey, what happened with this role? Um, and it's, uh, it, it's also important to get feedback. Um, I'm not saying every actor in every role needs to get feedback, um, but uh, especially if it's an important role, if it's something you felt really strongly about, or if the agent or manager needs to know kind of how you're doing, um, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's part of our exchange. That's really what, that's how we work together uh, and, and help each other is by offering that information and, and, uh, and supporting each other. So yeah, absolutely. They should be calling and checking in. Thank you. I, I have two questions. One's a short one and one's, um, anyway, I won't comment on it. The one that is, what is the r right eye line they were asking about when you're talking about the self tape? Where do you like the eyes to hit? I think unless you're specifically directed otherwise, you should be slightly off camera, just like you would be in the room with the reader. Uh, if you can make eye contact with the reader, then, then perfect. Great. So this is simplicity is great advice, as is the suggestion to make sure that you are doing the read the casting director asked for. It makes me wonder, though, what if you get an amazing Shakespearean so soliloquy, so soliloquy? It's not what you wanted, but it's impressive. What do you do? So what? what? <laughs> so what they're asking is, what if they have an audition and they have something they want to share with you that's different than the audition? <laughs> completely different from the audition right. um, uh, unless it's a, a okay so uh, I will say this um, 
if we're looking for the audition, we're looking for the audition. Okay. Um, I don't necessarily want to see something else. However, if you, let's say I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at demo reels, I'm considering who I'm going to have audition. And let's say you don't have a demo reel. I will look at other material on you, even if it's an audition for something else. Um, even if it's a monologue, I, I'm happy to, to look at other stuff. I want to get a sense of who you are and what you have to, to offer. Um, but if it's specifically, I'm looking for your audition and you also send me something else, I probably won't watch it. Very good. I don't have the time. <laughs> I understand 60,000 just for the open call that you did. Um, I also, somebody wrote to me cause you were talking about this and I think it's great as, uh, you're saying, you know, practice, practice every day. And she says, where's the best place online to get slides to practice with? Do you have recommendations? Um, I, I don't. Um, I mean, I'm not an actor, so I don't really know where actors go and get these things. Uh, but I, I imagine there are, are, are places out there. Um, there may even be, yeah, I, I really couldn't even speculate. Right. But I, I, I just, you know, talk with your actor friends. I'm pretty sure your friends or friends of their friends have, have their hands on some sides. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Cameron, you have a question? Yeah, I have two questions. Do you have an, or any of the bits of beautiful pieces of wisdom you've given us, are there anything that applies specifically to child actors that we should know? And then secondly, <clears throat> is there any training um, that you highly recommend? Are there any um, teachers or, or schools that you think uh, really produce, you know, the kind of actors you're always looking for? You know, just looking for yeah. classes, instructors. Yeah, I appreciate that question. I, you know, I, I don't like to recommend um, uh, specific uh, teachers or classes. Uh, there's uh, many wonderful ones out there. And, and even someone that I might recommend may not be the right fit for an actor. Um, so I think it's important to, uh, to you know, try out a class, see if, if they, they're working for you. Um, I think classes are going to be very different now, maybe virtual uh, for a little while. So, um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think it's just a matter of, of seeing, you know, who, who's going to work with you the best uh, and, and ask, ask, ask your actor friends, ask, you know, uh, if people who, who've had these personal experiences, you know, because I'm not being trained by, by these, uh, these teachers, um, I don't have that experience. I'm not sure exactly what they have to offer. Um, yes, I see a lot of actors come out of certain schools and, and classes and, and with teachers and coaches uh, who are amazing, but uh, I don't know necessarily if it's because of that teacher. <laughs> So, um, but getting to the other question about younger uh, actors, um, I think one tip that I will, uh, I will offer is, um, you know, child actors have a tendency to be over-rehearsed, um, and it is, uh, it is something that, you know, sometimes it's better just to have uh, an, uh, their, their first or second instincts. Um, so just be mindful of that. You don't want them to be, you know, so perfect, so uh, completely word for word. Um, I mean, sometimes I'll have uh, young actors come in and everything that they say from the moment they walk in to the moment they shake their hands and leave is rehearsed. And it's, uh, and it, it just, it, it doesn't give them the freedom to perform and be themselves and relax. And, and it's important to, to let them, you know, be themselves, their kids. That's great. Fantastic advice, Jason. Thank you. Um, I want to ask this question. Uh, Matt Nolan says, you know, uh, a role with three to four scenes, like for NCIS franchise, the camera never stops rolling in front of produ producers when we're in person. Can we self-tape and keep moving through each scene with just a beat for breaks? And how important is the slate at the beginning or end for casting director producer seeing that our name and role is already on file? Uh, great questions, Matt. Hey, uh, so uh, yes, when we have producer sessions, we may be keeping the camera rolling, but we actually do cut between scenes uh, and trim it just like you would. Um, but you're welcome to, if you want to do your self tape, is one long, you know, take and and you just you know uh, have beats in between. That's perfectly fine, and it's up to you. Um, but if you if you want to cut it, I, I, that's it's com yeah. Either way is fine with us. Um, as far as um, I, was it a slate or a title card? He so. said uh, slate. Let me just make sure. Beginning casting director's name and role is already on file. Uh, how important yeah. is a slate? I think the slate is still important, um, even if we don't ask for it, um, because you know we may not be thinking about it at the time. But when you tell us, 
um, you know, your height or something, um, or we're, just when we see the full length uh, view of you, it'll uh, give us a, another, um, it'll give us something else to, to, to consider and think about. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rebecca, you have questions? I do. I've got two and they're, they're uh, both related to uh, uh, the full body shot. Uh, one uh, is from uh, Christine, who is watching the self-tape webinar right now and uh, wanted to know personally as a performer with a disability, uh, has had difficulty doing a full body shot. So if you have a, you know, the chance to sort of uh, give any advice when that might not be possible. We also had a related question from Nancy, just in general about the horizontal idea of a full body shot in a small space and that how it can be difficult. So how would yeah. you address those, Jason? And yeah, every do the best in your comments. <laughs> yeah, do, thank you. Well, do, just do the best you can. You know, we understand there are limitations, um, you know, with space and with, with, you know, having someone else to help you. Um, so just do the best you can. We completely get it. Um, you know, we have these requests, we have these, these instructions. Um, uh, but, you know, sometimes people have to deviate because they have to just make it work. Uh, that's perfectly fine. You know, if, if you can't get a, a full body shot, get as wide as you can. Um, we'll completely uh, we'll be fine with that. Thank you. Uh, the, it, regarding the self tape part of that, this is a guy who wrote earlier. And I, sorry that I don't have his name right in front of me, but he talks about being six foot tall. His name is Paul Sadlick. He's looking for a tripod with a ring light that will extend to his eye level. He's having difficulty in finding one. And could you recommend a tripod with a ring light for taller actors? I say put it on yeah. a box, but. I don't no, know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really couldn't. I, I, I don't have that stuff. So I right. don't know anything. Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> Can yeah, we have you any other questions? Great, yeah, I was just going to say that'll be a great question. I know our NGP folks are coming up with the how to do easy self tape stuff from home and make it work no matter what. So I'm going to add that question to their list. Oh, good. That's great. Thank you for that. And then um, do you have, yes, Cameron. Um, Marvin Avila asks, he asked some things that have already been uh, answered, so I'm going to just go to one thing that I think is interesting. When you are doing your slate, is that a time to reveal a little bit about yourself since you're not in the room, you know, to, like, sometimes my son will say, I'm six foot three, but I'm six four with the hair, you know, or whatever. <laughs> a little bit of, you know, life and humor. Or is that irritating? <laughs> no, that, that's, I, that's exactly what I want. That is perfect. Um, I, I, yeah, just a little a glimpse of yourself um, because, you know, we're not just looking for a performer. We're also looking for an employee. We're looking for someone we want to work with. Um, so if we get a sense that you're somebody that is going to be fun to work with, it's going to be, um, you know, a pleasure to work with, um, then, then great. Um, but if, you know, if you're just very stiff and, and, and impersonable and, and, uh, or scary, then, uh, then it might influence how, what we think of you. So yeah, we want to see a little glimpse of yourself. Absolutely. That's great advice. Thank you. That's really key. Cause I actually, that's somebody told me, don't just be really straight out. And I'm like, oh, cause it was just a moment to say, Hey, how you doing? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So before we go, oh, this has been, first of all, Tremendous, Jason, tremendous. So thank you. Before we go, because we really appreciate all what you gave us here, do you have any parting advice that you wanna share? Anything that you know we might've missed that you wanna speak on, please, this is a good time to do that. Um, you know, I, I just want to remind actors that we are on your side. You know, sometimes we're seen as the gatekeepers or the, the people that are so hard to get through to, uh, get in front of. Um, but we, uh, we love actors, we love uh, telling these stories, and um, we are always advocating for actors. And just know, you know, it may take some time to get in front of us, um, but we love seeing you succeed. Um, we want to see you succeed. We, we're there for you. If you ever get an opportunity to audition for, for any casting director, that, right there, that is, that is confidence that we have in you that you can do this. Um, so just know that and, and run with that and just know that we, uh, we believe in you and, and we're excited uh, to see you succeed. Oh, Jason, that is so good for people to hear that. That's really great. Thank you so much for everything. This is Jason Kennedy, everybody. We also thank want to you, thank, uh, thank you and SAG After Foundation and all of our guests, 
all of you who joined us today. Please stay tuned for future President's Task Force on Education, Outreach, and Engagement panels and webinars right here on the SAG-AFTRA YouTube channel. And while you're here, please subscribe to the channel to get updates on the great content that we are posting on a regular uh, basis. Uh, thank you to everybody. Have a beautiful, beautiful holiday weekend and take care of yourselves. Thank you.